Sure. If you don't mind. <laughs> hey, everybody say hi to Graham. He's filming tonight. Ow! How you guys going to focus a little bit more on what is above the board and how to optimize your rig to go past the bottom. All right. We probably touch on steps a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Go over, go over the sail and uh, and how to stand properly to get the most. <laughs> um, so we'll go with the sail first. So the sail. You don't necessarily, on, on every sail, the settings aren't exactly the way they should be. Therefore, if you have that full 100% carbon mass that matches that neopride sail, that matches the boom and the conditions that they are rigging it in, and even then, it's, you don't go by everything. They say 28 centimeters of extension on this mast with this much outhaul. Really, the only thing they put plus and minus on is the outhaul. But you have to look at the... Uh, at the extension also. They should put plus or minus two centimeters on the extension as to where it is. It also depends on what mass, if you're using a neopride or the Nash mass, everything flexes differently. Um, so that's one thing to, to adjust. So with... 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And the sails stretch. Like the first time you use it, maybe it'll be, have, you, know, you put it to 28, that's a ton of downhaul, and then you get it wet and ride it for a week, and then it's not the knockdown hall, but they do stretch a lot, so can't go 100% by the specs, you got to look on either side a little bit. The easy way to notice that they stretch is when you buy a new sail and you get the battens tight and you get all those wrinkles out of the, the batten sleeve, and you sail it for two days and you go back and rig it again and there's a ton of wrinkles back in the sleeve, and it wasn't because the, the batten loosened itself, it's because all the fabric and everything in the sail stretched and you got to go back and tune it again, um, and after like... 10 or 15 uses, then, then you don't have to worry about that stuff. But um, the downhaul on a sail, so let's first start with downhaul on a sail, uh, is just as much a difference as, as if you're moving this mast track forward or back a, a half an inch or a centimeter. Downhaul, downhauling just a centimeter is going to change your sail that much. And what, what downhaul does is it moves that center of effort. So the center of effort on the sail is right in front of the harness lines. Usually, if your harness lines are set correctly, <laughs> it's usually right in front of those harness lines. And depending on how much or how little downhaul you have in the sail, it's going to make that center of effort rise higher. It's going to be standing you up and pulling you a lot more. Or it's going to bring the center of effort down, and it feels like there's nothing in the sail, but the, but the board's actually moving across the water. With speed... We want to get the sail not necessarily, you can feel it too far. So if you, if you over downhaul a sail, that center of effort doesn't want to stay in one spot anymore. It starts to float around the sail. You can never actually lock back into position and have it just sit there and feel like a gas pedal on the board where you can just go faster and faster. The sail will either start to fall back too far or stand itself up. It just feels like it's floating all over the place the whole time. That's when you have too much downhaul on the sail. Uh, it's really easy for people to do because these days everybody says the sails have to twist off so much at the top and you have to, if you don't see any of that, that twisting at the top and the sail doesn't have enough downhaul, you can easily downhaul the sail too much, um, especially as going over JR's race sail today and, and race sails differ as to how much a Neil Pride takes a ridiculous amount of downhaul, whereas a Maui sail takes no downhaul at all and trying to figure it out with it, and you just have to play with it. So put a little bit of downhaul, which I guess is a pain in the ass again because you have to come off of the water, <laughs> pop the board off, put a little bit more downhaul on the sail. Um, that is the secret to speed, is actually making those changes in the same session so you can tell the difference. And so, so what we're trying to do with speed is trying to get that downhaul to the spot where the sail is no longer picking you up onto your toes. So it's no longer stand, every time you get a gust, you really want that weight to pull straight through your harness, down into your feet and down into the board and get you to go faster, rather than if you feel that gust and it, it feels like the board that, or the sail is actually standing you up on top of your toes and you feel like you have to sheet out to get yourself to come right back down again, 
That means your center of effort is a little too high on the sail, or your sail is rigged a little bit too, you're rigged over, overpowered. So what we're going to do is just downhaul the sail a little bit, maybe a centimeter, and what that's going to do is lower that center of effort just that tiny bit. With, uh, with my race sails, I don't play with the downhaul very much at all. It's probably about a, a, an inch difference depending on uh, the conditions I'm sailing in. So it's not like I'm going to drastically let a lot off to get in to get planing in light wind conditions because all that's going to do is feel like the sail's pulling and feel like the sail's pulling, but you're not going any faster. You know, it's it's just a lot of work. You feel like you have all this wind in the sail, but because there's not enough downhaul, it's not bleeding off the top of the sail. It's not flowing off the sail properly. Pulling you over. Just yanking. Whereas the, the opposite is if you downhaul too much, or if you just downhaul past the point where it doesn't feel like there's that pull anymore, the board's still going to be going the same speed. You just have to stand up over the board a little bit more. It's not going to feel like there's that constant pull in the sail. But, yep. You're going to be affecting bottom end and top end during but the whole downhauling process, so? Yeah. Speed wise? For the bottom and top end, high wind, low wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so you can make. The sails today have huge range, and, and uh, you can get, depending on also the sail brands, you can get, some are better high end, so, so their low end punch to get planing isn't quite as good, but when they get overpowered, they handle it a lot better, whereas other sails, when they, when, uh, they can, they can um, get planing really, really easily, uh, like four batten sails now are, are huge because you can get away, the sail's lighter, so you can get away with less weight on the board, so that's less weight to make the board sink, so you're actually going to be going across the water, and those huge panels catch a lot more wind, so you, you're, the, the wind, not they don't catch more, it sticks on the panels a little bit more, so it's got a little bit more pull to it, they, they get that low end grunt, whereas you get really, you start to get overpowered with a, with a four batten sail, the sail doesn't hold its shape anymore, it's, it twists off in different forms, there's five, the more battens you have in it, the more the sail, as it starts to catch that gust and twist off and the mass starts to bend and bleed, bleed wind off, the sail keeps its shape and it doesn't, no wind is sticking on the sail, it's actually still flowing from mast to the trailing edge to the leech. But yeah, more downhaul is definitely going to, you know, more downhaul it's going to, it's going to bleed wind better, but once you give too much downhaul it's not going to give as much push. And then not as much downhaul, it's going to feel, a lot of times it'll feel like it's pulling a ton, but the top isn't twisting and therefore getting pushed forward so it doesn't have as much drive. But generally you can do a little bit less downhaul for lighter winds, a little bit more downhaul when you're worried about the high end gust. Not necessarily the winds are higher, but when you're really worried about that high end gust taking you over, then you're going to download it and take a little bit less power. But under downhaul, it's bad either way actually, over downhaul yeah. and under downhaul. Especially, it depends so much on the sails. Like my four batten sails, if I over downhaul them, they sail like crap. Whereas my five batten sails, if I under downhaul them, then they don't twist off very well. So a lot of this stuff is really dependent on. You can really rig a sail. I was sailing uh, like four days ago. Um, I had the Canadian hole on a four nine when everybody was going out on six eights and seven twos and seven fives, and that's just. That's pure on a 100 liter board in a 4.9, um, and that's purely just how I rigged the sail. I left it really tight at the top so the wind didn't bleed off. It was a little more work for me to control the sail, but I got out of it what I wanted was, which was more pull, more power to put down. When a gust hit, so when it actually was all right to be on that that size sail, it was it felt like crap because the, because no wind is bleeding off the sail at all. Pulls you but over. The, the, the other time that the, the gusts were so few and far between <coughs> that I was able to control the sail. If the wind picks up, boom, just pull it down at two centimeters, at one centimeter, and the sail becomes uh, really easy to control. A lot of people are generally over downhauling, it seems like, rather than under downhauling. A lot of lessons we do, people always crank it to the top two or three panels are all the way floppy. Generally, that's a little too much. Like if you're going to go kind of with the average, people are generally downhauling sails a little too much. Just just play around with it to where to where you 
downhaul it to that minimum setting or whatever it says on the bottom of the sail, downhaul it to that spot, go out, and if you feel like the sail, even in a little bit windier conditions, if you feel like it's never picking you up at all, that's the, that's the proper spot that it should be. If, if you feel like that sail is standing you up in the gust and standing you up, then just downhaul it that one centimeter, one or two centimeters. It really takes the, 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 the most minor adjustment to, to get yourself to set back down and have the sail feel proper. But it's better to be just under that, that uh, minimum than way over the maximum. It's not, the sail is not going to perform. How about for off the wheel top end speed? That's the, so with the slalom is, is uh, or the top end, that's what you're trying to find is that spot just below where it's standing you up. So if you, if, if you get that gust and it starts to pick you up again, especially with, uh, with people using seat harnesses, it's, which, which now a lot of slalom sailors are getting into waist harnesses, because when that gust hits, you can kind of bend at the waist a little bit and bleed off some of that uh, some of that pull, whereas with the seat harness, that gust hits and stands you up, it's picking up your whole body weight. So it takes all your weight off of your feet, and you have no way to control the board anymore. You can't keep it. So you're trying to find that maximum speed is going to be just below where it's, where it's standing you up. So if you go out and you, you go on that next reach, and, and just that one little gust picks you up, just barely, barely downhaul it a little bit. And that's going to settle. That's going to bring that center of effort just that six inches down, and start. Deep off the wind, like 130 degrees off the wind. That's deep. yeah. That's deep, deep off the wind is it, very fast. That's well, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what angle you're going. Yeah. So it, it's uh, it's when you get to that point, you're 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 not using. You, you kind of you're gonna to have to rig your sail just for that for that degree off the wind because you're traveling so far with the wind. There's not every gust like that isn't necessary unless unless you're in those 50 knot spots or the 40 knot spots. You're not gonna be feeling. You're gonna be traveling at 30 knots downwind, and or, and that's gonna I don't, I don't know the, the correct math on that, but it's it's gonna be cutting the wind in half. So that 50 knot gust that would be hitting you. Uh, if you're going straight across the wind, now it's hitting you only at like 30. So you you have to rig for that for that specific direction, and that's it. Um, and at, at that same thing, because you're traveling a little bit more with the wind, you're gonna let off some of that. You're not gonna be able to run with as much downhaul as you would like a regular slalom course, which is like 100, 115 off the, off the wind. So if you're running deeper, take a little less off. Or take yeah a little less downhaul if you're running more across the wind, uh, more more downhaul because you're going to be feeling more of that actual wind hitting your sail. Um, what about boom heights up and down. Yeah, so the boom along with the with the downhaul, the boom you're going to have to. You guys have noticed you put you put more downhaul on the sail. The boom the the sail seems to touch the boom on the other side. It's uh it's making the sail a little bit longer, so it's taking that mass that's curved in the left sleeve and pushing it tighter into the left sleeve. So it's making the distance from where your boom is to the clue a little bit longer. So the sail is going to wrap around the end of the boom. If you adjust, so if you adjust your downhaul, you have to play with your outhaul. So, you, so downhaul goes down two centimeters, pop out, run over to the outhaul, and uh, just adjust it. Outhaul is a little bit easier and faster to adjust to play with because you can leave it two centimeters or th four centimeters off. You don't want to leave it too far, but two centimeters off the trailing edge of the boom, and if you're overpowered, yank it all the way out. Underpowered, let it off. It's okay on sails to have the sail touching the boom. It's not going to, it doesn't affect it uh, very much. You don't necessarily want it wrapped around, but again, with my racing stuff, if it's not touching the boom, the foil isn't working properly. All the battens, battens and sails are uh, thick at the back and skinny in the front to make that curve like an airplane wing. If you have the sail too flat and yanked out really, really flat on the, on the, uh, with the outhaul, that center of effort is moving back to where the battens are flexing uniform and not actually stiffer at the tail and uh, more, more loose at the tip. So it doesn't look like an like an airplane wing, right? It doesn't. It's the same as if you look at fins. The foil's a little bit farther forward. It's not directly in the middle of the sail. So if you look at your sails, uh, like Ezzy's 
ridiculously easy to look at it and see where that foil is because the, their battens are cranked so tight and it's stiff, 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 and then as it starts to get closer to the mast, that's where the bend is. That's what's actually driving you forward and uh, creating the lift in the sail. So if you, if outhaul is really easy. Outhaul it messes with the bend. The bend yeah. is made to set a sail in a certain curve, and when you over outhaul it, it brings it back. So outhaul is really easy to, to just like downhaul, you can over downhaul. Under outhaul, you'll notice it yourself. The, the, the sail will be wrapped around the boom. It's not going to be it's going to be pulling like crazy. It's not going to feel good. Um, but that set, you, you want you want that sail to be pretty close to the boom. That's what that's what's getting the foil in the sail. That's what's that's what's allowing your sail to do what it create the lift and the drive. The underpowered, you let it off. It makes the foil deeper, creates more lift and more drive. Uh, and overpowered, you're actually tightening that and taking the pocket away so that the wind flows off. A little bit more smooth, and especially like non-race sales. So we see like we just came doing clinics in the DR, and we like send all our all our uh, guests out, and these these sales they're taking out from from the rental spot, they had so much downhaul, and they're going, and you can see like it looks like he should be going right now. I'm a five eight, he's on a five eight. What's going on? And then you pop the downhaul, and there's like they downhaul like six inches on some of those sales. So you see kind of that a lot. People tend to be scared to let the sail touch the boom at all, and a lot of the more modern sails, especially the four batten sails, they really are meant to, to let them touch up against the boom. So it seems like, I don't know, a lot of the older sails, people were terrified to let it touch the boom. If it touched the boom at all, that was wrong, and so a lot of people are over-outhauling their sails, and they just feel like they don't have much in them. You're pumping, but you don't feel like you're getting a ton from it. It's usually over-outhaul, and don't be afraid to, to let, it touch the, uh, let it touch the boom. And also, for me, when I'm rigging, to go out, even if, you know, waves, whatever it is, usually I'll set sort of the, the minimum outhaul on a sail because I find it's a lot easier when I'm swimming in the water to judge how much more outhaul I'm giving it by pulling it tighter, whereas when you pop that cleat and you're letting it out, it's kind of hard. Sometimes a lot goes through, sometimes a little bit goes through. It's kind of hard to tell how much is going out. So I'd rather go out there... And with not very much outhaul and sail around, you're like, whoa, I'm powered, I need some outhaul. That's, you know, it's a fun reason to jump in the water. And then you can really judge well how much more you're giving it. Whereas if you're going to go out there with a bunch of outhaul on your sail, you're more likely to be, more likely to be oh, I'm not going to fall in the water and change this. I'm just going to struggle with it here for two hours. And then when you do try to change it, you know, maybe you let way too much out. It's really hard to judge. Much easier to judge more outhaul than it is letting outhaul off when you're swimming in the water. Yeah, a lot. And that's, a, that's the quickest way too to adjust your power is your outhaul. Instead of having to come in and put put more or less downhaul, kind of get that medium spot on your downhaul and then just play with your outhaul on that on the outside. You can do it easily in the water, um, pop it in and off. Uh, according to boom height, you guys have any questions with the downhaul and outhaul or anything? I I get it. So I run mine two, two four centimeters farther than uh, than I should just so the back's not touching the sail, but I found the max speed is when the when my my sail's touching the boom almost to in front of it. I got a adjustable outhaul that's like two feet back, and the, the sail on the other side of the boom is touching. And it's a long boom. I mean, it's from here to Wyatt. <laughs> if it's touching from there up to the to that spot, then that's the, that's the max. Yeah, that's the max spot. But it's not. It's, again, it's not wrapped around it. It's just barely, barely, barely touching. And it's hard to figure out when you're on land rigging it because you rig it in the only spot you can't push far enough forward because that boom's huge. So you're, you're pushing down here and it's touching the boom easy, easy, easy. But the thing you have to do is know that the pressure is up towards the front, towards where that pocket is. So walk up, walk around to the mast, to the head of the boom, and push on that pocket. And the, the spot that's touching the boom on the back should actually rise up off of it an inch or so. But let it... Uh, I find faster faster is is on the boom. The you yank too much of it out, then it starts to float around. The sail doesn't want to lock into position and sit and, and just accelerate. It wants to wants to go forward on the gust. Wants to fall back on the low. It doesn't. It's not. It's not like that locked in spot where you just focus on the board. And if you're overpowered, which way do you move your boom? Yeah. So that's a. So that's a, the next is boom height. With uh, it's, it's, so it differs on any board you're riding. If you're on uh, this wave board, 
you're going to run your boom height relatively the same as if you're standing on the beach and where you feel comfortable. So from your chin to your chest to around your collarbone area is that same because when you step back, you're not moving very far on the board. If you're on these boards, when you're standing on, the, on land, I've got the, board, the boom up at my forehead or up above my head because I'm moving back far on the board. Every time I move back, the, board, the boom comes down, and then I move that foot out on the rail. So I move my body farther out on the rail, the boom comes down again. So if I rode it, if I stand on the beach and had it in the regular spot that I would, say, on the wave board, by the time I got in the straps and out on the rail, it's going to be at my waist and you're not going to have the proper push down, the pressure into the mast. So depending on the width or the board that you're riding, you're going to run a little bit higher. A higher boom is always better. It's more efficient. You get planing earlier. Um, it allows you to get more mass base, mass base pressure, uh, which in turn comes back to efficiency. A lot of people are running booms too low. A huge reason is because they can't water start <laughs> without the boom touching the tail of the board. But you're really only water starting for, say, like two minutes of your session, right? And <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Time spent uh, on a reach. So you do five minutes in, on a reach, fall in, you get out of the water in a minute, right? So you want it to be more comfortable for that one minute that you're water starting or the five minutes that you're actually running across the water, sailing across the water. So you really got to get away from that comfort zone of putting it's also hard to find the boom. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So lo longer lines, higher boom. We preach that at every every uh, lesson clinic nonstop. Longer lines, higher boom is just it's way more efficient. There's a million different reasons why you could go over for uh, for all of it, um, which would be your. I never see my lips back up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so longer lines, higher boom, racing higher. Not necessarily too high for, for dead speed. I don't run mine uh, extremely high. I still keep it at about, some of the guys run it even when they're out over the board. It's at the top of the, the uh, boom sleeve. Uh, it's, 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 it gets to a personal preference. Then you can get to adjusting. There's, there's so much <laughs> it's so much stuff with that, with speed and all this. With Adjusting the mass is going to, or the mass track gets your boom, or your board to ride in the proper position on the water. R nose is riding too high, nose is riding too low. Same goes with your boom height. So if you change your boom height, if, you, if your board is feeling extremely playful and you can't seem to keep it locked into position for that speed, you're going to lower your boom. What that's going to do is it gets, that, uh, gets your pull down, it keeps the board in the water, a little more pressure down here. It's going to lock the board in, into position, and it's not going to feel like the thing wants to run all over the place. If it feels like your board's biting a lot, and the water's really hitting up, up front, and you don't have control of the board, the water's making your board get thrown back and forth all over the place, raise your boom two inches. It's, it's the opposite of what you would think. You would think that by raising your boom, it's going to put more pressure down into the board because your boom's higher and you're pulling down more, but... With the speed, raising your boom is actually going to make the front of the board a little bit lighter, make the board more lively and playful. Um, this is for this is for yeah for speed. It's so kind of the same as the uh, as the the thing, the universal. You know, if the board is riding nose is too high, it's too playful, as Dyson was saying, you can either move this forward or drop your boom. And if the board's biting too much or sticking to the water too much and not going very fast, you can either move your board, your boom up or move the mass base back. And the, yeah, and the boom is a lot more with this is this this has a lot more to do with the the height height of the nose. The boom has to do with the playful rail to rail on the board. So if you're if you want more play in the board and you want more control over it because there's a lot of chop and you and you need to maneuver your board at high speeds up and over certain pieces of chop. Raise your board, your boom a little bit higher. The more o the more overpowered and the more that board's wanting to fly away from you, bring your boom down. But again, it's one or the other, not both of them at the same time. So don't come in and change your fin, move this forward, and pop the boom up because it's all going to feel like crap again. Uh, <laughs> just just do one. Um, just move your boom a little bit higher, a little bit lower. 
And change every few rounds, but change only one thing. Yeah. And Titan C. Boom. Which one to start with? Like Boom, because it's the easiest. I mean, come, it comes straight. You can come into the beach. You can fall in on your run across or jump in the water and pop the boom up an inch and see on your next run back if, if, if that's what it was. If, that, if it's not, so if your board is sticking a lot uh, in the water, just, just biting, 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 you pull the boom up that inch, go on your run back in. If it's doing the same thing, pop the boom back to where it was and then come to here and move this. So you, you want to bring everything back to where you had it to your to your regular settings. To, is it, there's, you usually will look at the sail and say, okay, this is where I start. And, and depending on the day or the conditions, then you, then you play with it from there. But you always start with a basic this much downhaul, this much outhaul. This is where I put my boom height and that marking on your board as to where this is the perfect, the perfect wind, perfect sail, perfect thing. Come off the water, one mark, and you're done. And that's and then so you can start there with the uh, with the mass base or the universal. Start at that same spot with the extension. Start at the same spot with the boom, and uh, and go from there. But it's just minor, minor, minor adjustments. Once you start tweaking with all of it, you can figure out. And especially if you have this, if you're on the same sail for the last five years, I mean it's. I get a new, once I finally tweaked out my race sails and have them so perfect, they, yeah, they say, okay, you're the new one. For <laughs> <laughs> so the next six months, just so beating the crap out of yourself. <laughs> yeah, <'cause laughs> nothing feels yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but, yeah. <laughs> um, you can take your sails, boom. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Bad intention. Stand. Yeah. Uh, all right. So stance. No longer is it is it just jam that sail back. It was the closing the gap that everybody called it. And they're like, oh, I can't close the gap on the sail, especially with the with the free freestyle or wave or free ride sails we sail with now. No longer do you have to take that sail and have it be touching in between your foot straps with the clue dragging in the water almost. Um, the the that with race sails, pure race, it's a little different, but with the free ride and all that stuff, there's, it's a lot more upright stance. The boards are shorter, um, the sails are a little more compact. Everything is a little bit more upright on the board rather than getting it all back. It's, again, we try and get people off of that back foot. And people are so used to taking that sail, taking their huge 50 centimeter fin on their 80 liter wave board <laughs> and running all the way back to the tail and saying they had a great time, you know, flying across the water. Whereas it's like, why do you have a wave board? If, you know, you're not you're not feeling the board. All you're doing is riding on the on the fin the entire time. Um, it's a lot more upright stance. The sails are coming up more upright. Don't have to close that gap. Um, getting everything away from you is huge with stance. So. Longer lines helps out with that, um, and what, I mean, what lines, lines are you using? I use 32s. So oh, that's race gear, yeah, 30s. So I use, yeah, so for freestyle, I use 32s, um, and for for racing, I use 30s. So it's, it depends. And your chest harness or, or waist? Waist or harness, yeah. Waist harness? Yeah. So, or, yeah, waist harness, so it's not even uh, racing, I'm not using a seat, which... You'd think a seat you could get away with longer lines because the hook's farther down, but not the same same uh, same harness for both. Um, yeah, longer lines are huge, and it takes it takes a while to get used to them. But don't jump from your 16 centimeter lines, which you're essentially just hooking into the boom at that point. <laughs> <laughs> don't jump from that to 28s. You know, it's it's of course it's going to feel different. Jump from the 16s. Which nobody should even be selling anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I started 22. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so the the, the shortest lines you you should be on to, to uh, get the most out of your gear is is depending on your size is 22s is is, is probably the, the smallest. If you look at it, the, the more when you hook into that the the sail, the sails you can be leaning out, the sail can be straight up and down, and you're using that entire sail. So you get you're using every square inch of that sail. The shorter your lines are, the more you're leaning 
over the water, the less of that sail you're actually using. It's the same as same as a fin if we're sailing along and leaning on our upwind rail. You're not using very much of that fin, whereas if, I'm, if I've got that fin straight up and down, I'm using the entire surface area of that fin to get me planing across the water. Longer lines are going to allow you to lean out, get more weight down on the board, but still keep that sail really, really vertical, so you can use, you can use every, every, every single bit of that sail. So comparing the lengths of the lines to your arms, your arms are completely straight, or they bend a little? No, nah, they're, they're they're bent. I mean, it's 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 about even with thirty two, they bent. Thirty twos, yeah. It's just the sailing. So so that's that's why my boom is up at my chest when when I'm sailing. When I, when I'm back at the at the uh, at the foot scraps, it's up at my chest. It's not at my chest, standing straight in front of it, and as I move back, it lowers down. At that point, yeah, then I'm going to have my arms way out, but no, it's, it's, um, it's, a diff it's a little bit different stance. It allows you to get more pressure down into the, into the mass space. I mean, yeah, I'm, uh, he's 6'4". He's six, six <laughs> my brother is 2 inches, an inch smaller than me, <coughs> shorter than me, and he's, uh, he uses 34s, and I can't, I, I don't like him. I can't, I don't like the mines at all. I don't like my brother either, but. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully he's watching right now. <laughs> but no, he, he, it's just, it's a personal preference, but you got to get to, we, I started out with 24s and easily jumped to 26 and easily went to 28 and then 32 felt long for a second. Yeah. And then it, it was just that, so now I go from, 32s down to 30s and they feel short. I went from 32s to at Vela using 28s three weeks ago and it felt like I was hooking. And I couldn't get away from the rig. I couldn't use the use the rig to its full uh, full capability. It just didn't it didn't feel right. Um, but yeah, depending on your height and it, it, everything bigger than 22. 24. 24 is enough. Yeah. You shouldn't go below 24. That's a lower limit of acceptability. <laughs> well, I thought the toy shoes were kids. Yeah, it's true. Ladies, and you jump thirty. Some people you just can't convince. You gotta jump down twenty two. I gotta eat. Okay, um, <laughs> <laughs> what's your twenty two? Yeah. But yeah, it's just a little bit. Just, just uh, I mean, maybe buy the adjustable lines and from the twenty fours to thirties or something, and start with it at twenty four, and just pop it out a little bit. And don't, it, it's like anything new, everybody, it doesn't feel comfortable unless it's the greatest thing in the world, like the 32 inch line. So <laughs> you gotta just, just go a little bit and sail it for a day or sail it for an hour and then see if you can go, if you can pop it a little bit longer. And just go out that, that inch or two inches until you find that sweet spot, which should be bigger than 24, <laughs> 22. Who's friends of mine? No, see that's the that's the worst thing we've seen. <laughs> you see is is you tell somebody to get bigger lines, so they go out and they buy third. They go from 22s and go out and buy 30s, but they place them <laughs> with the parts, so it's still 16 inches off the boom. And no, they they your lines should be no wider apart than the width of your hand. Even on the big on my uh, 8.6 race sail, it's no wider farther apart than. The, than the width of my hand. We got the mono lines here, which which work great. Also, uh, they they take a little bit more work. You have to control the set a little bit, but the the wider the wider you have your lines, the more work you're going to be doing. You, 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 it's like having your hands really wide on the boom. You can overpower the sail extremely easily, but then again, the sail can power you. So if if you get a gust, it's going to yank you over. Whereas if your hands are right at that sweet spot. You can't really sheet in very easily, sheet out very easily, but the sail is going to do that for you. When it hits, when the wind hits the sail and it wants to sheet out, it's going to happen. You're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to overpower. So you do a lot less work with your lines closer together. Yeah. He's got the best tip on that to find the, the best. To find the best position. Uh, yeah, real quick. If you have your sail on the. Uh, this is works really good if you just have no idea because you're in a rental center or something. But if you, if you take a sail, it doesn't work if you have a ton of wind flowing under it. But if you can kind of hide behind your van or something, once it's rigged, take two fingers 
Lift up, mask comes up, clues comes down, mask comes up, clues comes down, back. slowly move it back, and then it comes up perfectly balanced. If I move it a little too far, clue comes up, mask stays down, so I got a little, move a little more to the mask. Still, that clue came up a little bit too much, more towards the mask, perfect balance. That's usually a great starting point. It goes a little bit of personal preference, how much you want to fold your back hand versus pull it in the front hand, and it's not going to be 100%, but that's exactly where you start. There, you just move it forward the width of the, of the lines themselves. So don't go four inches forward, four inches back. If you, if you go out and you feel like you're having to pull a lot with your back hand, take both of them, just move them an inch back. Move, move them towards the, towards the pole or towards the pain, as you, as you said. Your back hand can't sheet in anymore. you got to move. But move both of them. Keep them that same distance apart and move both of them back. But that's a, that's a great way. You just got to make sure you're not in any wind. But that's a great way to find out instantly, just with that, especially with rental sales. You go somewhere that it's all rigged and you want to figure out, okay, well, somebody used the boom. Because your harness lines change depending on your boom height. I'm not going to go out. Somebody who's five foot flat is riding their lines a lot farther forward or back compared to when you move the boom up. I have to move the lines forward or back. So that's a great way to start is just to pick it up a couple times, find that balance point, move the lines around it, leave them kind of loose so that on your run out and back, you can just move it forward. And you got to do it two fingers though. It doesn't, you don't have the sensitivity. If you do it your whole hand, you can really <coughs> manipulate the boom. Just even one forward. finger, you know. Works. What about for different scale sizes? Yeah, so it's going to be, if you're, if you're using your own boom at, at your same height, you're going to, the bigger the size, the farther back you're going to move it. And usually it's only about the width of the, of the line per half meter. So you go from a 4.5 to a 5.0, you're going to move them back an inch or an inch and a half. 5.0 to 5.5, another inch and a half back. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really minor. It should be really minor. Which, yeah, it's like it, which, if you're using the same, that's, so it's different if you're, if you're going from an Ezzy to a Nash at a 5.5 five and then a, whatever, you're going to be changing all your, but if you have the same sail brand, it should only be an inch or two back yeah. per half. half I highly speed. suggest buying full quivers of sail, so it's safe. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Each <laughs> mask, each yeah. sail, yeah. each fin. Uh, you guys got any questions on sails? You can get way into the yeah. racing stuff, which is ridiculous. <laughs> Still one question about the down call. So you say you like the bone park when you're on the shore and you're doing down call by by the way how it looks. Yeah. Or you still have to go to the water and go backwards and No, no, just on just times. on just on what it uh what it looks like on the water. So you, so you could, uh, I'm looking out and I'm saying, Okay, I can go out on my four or five right now, but it looks like I'll be lit on my four or five, so I'll, I'll put a little more downhaul on it. I'll, I'll, so it's like I still have a lot of power at the four or five, so I'll, I'll, down, I'll downhaul it according to what I see on the sail as to, as to how much those top two battens, or top two panels are, are starting to twist off. I'll go from there and then leave the outhaul. So I'll go a little more downhaul and leave the, the outhaul a little less. So that if I was wrong and the wind wasn't quite as strong as it was, I'll be fine. But if it if it is as strong as it is, then I can easily just come in and pull the outhaul out tighter and then go. So you, you go off of. It takes a while to to know to look at the water, especially if you go to different spots all the time to know. But once you get used to one place, you should be able to go there and look at the water, stand by the beach for a second, and say, I can go on my. 5-0 right now with this board, 5-0 with a lot of downhaul or 5-0 with a little downhaul type. type. You're unsure that you're going to go medium. Like, they yeah, usually have right like small, middle. medium, max. Right in the middle is usually a pretty, pretty on point spot. I find that the maxes sometimes are a little bit too much, but the middle is usually perfect and then you can kind of tune with the alcohol a little bit. Or yep. mass base placement. Or the yeah. height. Or the pin height. <laughs> Yeah, so about the harness line way. So, you know, 10 years ago, guys knew how to sail, and they sail their arms outstretched. So how can you have longer harness lines? Something's changed I don't quite understand. 
Uh, they, they're running everything back there. Every it was a little bit lower, so you're running lower booms. When you go way back in the day, when they're the short lines, they had chest harnesses, so the hook was no, but not a lot higher, higher up. But yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> well, they also had shorter harness lines because the the mass traction of the whole board is right here. Uh, and yeah. so when they step back, it's like Tyson saying for a stall and sail, he puts it at his, you know, at his head because everybody was, all the sails were meant to sail really far back, all the free ride sails. But now we moved our, our mast track, you know, a foot and a half back on the board, the sails meant to sail more upright, so we're using longer harness lines. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you come far back and you have those long lines, you're going to be, yeah. be sitting But that was the deal, because we used to use real short harness lines because they were taking their sail and, yeah. Now it's over there. That's so awesome. Yeah, efficiency, higher boom, longer harness lines, bigger foot straps. So how do you know when they're long enough? Well, you basically, your arms are pretty much outstretched, and you're standing in a tall stance. So you're like still. number seven, so your arms are yeah, straight, still. your hips, your, 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 your uh, front leg is from your front leg to your top of your front shoulder, yeah. so the boom should be okay. at number seven. Nice and comfortable. You don't have to be leaning. If you're bending in too far, or your shoulder too far out, you can yeah. go a little bit longer line. Yeah, or if you're hunched over too far, they're a little too long. Um, but yeah, yeah, just just adjustable lines are great to to do. And then once you once you once you figure out which ones you like, then uh, then go and get it. People always say like, oh, I'll never be able to hold on. But if you look like, I mean, these are 28s. I'm holding the boom in the tips of my fingers, and from my elbow, you know, to my fingers. It's still totally grab that boom. You know, I could be all the way just the tips of my fingers, so I'll use 32s, but you really can use bigger harness lines. Some people are like, I can't use bigger harness lines. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, is that it? Should we let Andy take care of this? <laughs> 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 Maybe the wife. <laughs> yeah, no. Maybe take care of the wife. <laughs> You know, if anybody has any more questions, now would be the time to ask, but uh, otherwise... We have a few more things to go private. We do have a lot of stuff coming up here. Uh, these guys are available for hire. If uh, you like what you heard tonight, but you want to get a little bit more personal, uh, recommendations from them, uh, just uh, hit Wyatt up. Yeah. His contact info is right on the desk up here. Um, so they're available for private hire if you want. Uh, this weekend, Saturday, is uh, the Ocean Air Challenge. <laughs> Sounds sour. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> uh, so at the north end of Avon. Probably the McKinney Challenge. At the north end of Avon, there's going to be. Uh, uh, freestyle competition and a long distance slalom race? Yeah, just a long distance race. We'll just um, get everybody together and, and do like a really long distance, <coughs> go all the way to the reef and come back uh, just for the fun of it. It should be uh, great. More people yeah, the more people we have, yeah. exactly, the more people yeah. is there, not about the more fun is going to be. No point in not making it back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> back without hitting the sand. And You're not going to qualify if you don't make it back. <laughs> but it uh, should be tons of fun. And then uh, if you guys are lucky enough to be here next week again, we're doing more clinics here in the shop, uh, Monday night and Wednesday night, with uh, these same folks here, but the topics are going to change. Uh, and maybe, depending on the feedback we get from this silly thing, uh, <laughs> we might be broadcasting live again, so if you go home and you're wondering what you're missing, just click on uh, wind-nc, wind-nc.com, uh, and there's an events tab, and then I built the live Streaming webpage in like 45 <laughs> seconds before I came in. <laughs> so not pretty, but I think it's working. And we got one uh, last shameless. We run down in, in uh, Mexico, uh, Windsor Center for four months out of the year. Yeah, and, uh, in March. Yeah, we got a spot down there with all the latest and greatest Nash gear. 2012, 2000, well, this upcoming year will be 2012 and 13 gear. Um, ATVs. <coughs> All, All the, the combinations. combinations. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, the board. So much fun. Sandboarding. So much fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody who's been there comes back. So we know we're doing so much of a good job, or we're not charging them, probably. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's a high return rate. But, anyways, if you guys want one of our little super awesome postcards, it shows our little resort and uh, 
all the cool activities that we do, Tyson catching giant fish, four wheelers, Tyson sliding down sand hills. That's why I tried to hurt One final thing before uh, we all run. Uh, I did get word that somebody lost an extension at the Canadian Hole the other day, so if you came across it, maybe drop it off at the shop here. Um, otherwise, we also have those uh, super t-shirts, that blue one that are run for only 20 bucks. Uh, 20 the event. Yeah. Lower them. I've been charging 25. Yeah, but they're, they're, they're special now. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> We're overstocked. <laughs> so, we do thing a little bit. Yeah, because the events are. Cool, so totally thanks everybody down. for coming. Feel free to hang out if you want. Uh, <laughs> you Uh, I think we got four, but I think we peaked at eight. Eight years, yeah. Eighty? No, eight. Oh, really? Yeah. But now it's what? Four. Four. Yeah. <laughs> we hope you enjoy the show.